This is the circuit diagram. Now, by my calculations, you should be able to put up to 20 switches or so on a single Arduino input. And the reason that I've looked at doing this is I have a project that uses an AT Tiny on a surface mount board, and I need to read a whole bunch of switches. And the AT Tiny's only got six connections available for I/O, and uh, I wanted something that would only use one of them. So here we are. And the circuit works by using the resistors um, on the left there to create a voltage division chain so that the voltage drops all the way down. The first two resistors at the bottom there, they're both 1K and that's simply because you need a little bit of extra at the bottom to lever it away from the ground and it was just handier for me to use two resistors that are the same as the one I've already got. I could have used some other value in there, not a problem. Now, you need to tie the analog signal line down to ground simply because if all the switches are open then it's just going to float there and it's never a good idea to have a floating input you'll always get a lot of noise on it so I put in a 100k resistor it's not critical value you could use probably anywhere between 50k and 200k would work fine yeah the diodes are just general signal diodes. I used 1N4148, but just because I happen to have them, you could use any diode really. And all they're there for is to make sure that the most positive signal with respect to the analog line wins. Otherwise, if you push, say, switch 6 and switch 2, you'd probably get the system thinking that you'd push switch 4. But doing it this way, it's always clear which switch is pressed, it's always going to be the topmost switch, the switch that's nearest to the supply rail, that wins out, which is a much better system than sort of random. <laughs> so in a real world application, obviously you'd arrange the switches in order of priority with the most important switch, maybe a safety switch or something like that at the top. And here is the breadboard layout that I'm using. As you can see, I'm using an Arduino Nano. Um, you could use any Arduino, it doesn't really matter. I just happen to have the Nano handy already pushed into the breadboard. And if you've tried to push one of these into a breadboard, you know what I mean. It's not an easy task. <laughs> so I tend to leave it there and use it for all sorts of things. So basically I'm taking the 5 volts from the Arduino, the ground from the Arduino, and putting the analog voltage in on a naught. I'm using the negative supply rail on the breadboard nearest to us as basically as the analog line and the supply rails on the other side are being conventionally used as the plus five and the ground. Um, you can see there's a row of diodes there, there's the 100k resistance one basically with a wire connecting it onto the analog line and you'll see also there's two links. Now, I've put one wire so that I can permanently connect switch one. That was just during test to make sure that um, the priority encoding system worked because every other switch will then override switch one, which it does. And there's a wire there that's used to simulate a switch. Now, it's only connected to one diode, but that doesn't matter because all the diodes go to one place. The only reason that I've got all the diodes on the breadboard is simply so I can move that link around just to double check that everything works, which it does. Let me just talk you through briefly how the software works. So as usual at the top we've defined all of our constants, which in this case is the analog pin, which I'm using, which is A0. And uh, I've got two constants, one for the top count and one for the bottom count. Now the ADC count for ground shouldn't change, but if you change the design, it could do. Um, top count is basically the count of the top switch in the chain, um, and scientifically plus a little bit. I think I added something like um, 10 to it or something like that. Um, and you can find that e out easily enough, and I'll show you how that was done in the Mo. And switch divisions, SW divisions, is how many switches you've got in the design. I've got eight. 
Then I've got two variables which I'm using. Um, one's button which stores the value of the button that's currently pressed. Then you've got old button which is the last button that was pressed and that's used to tell us which button was released which can be quite important as we'll see. Then you've got setup. Well, I'm setting up the LED pin because I use that. And I'm setting up analog because I'm going to use um, setting up serial port because I'm going to use the um, serial port to debug this. So here we've got the heart of the routine which is read buttons and um, what I'm doing is an analog read to put it in a value called pot for potential. Now I've done a dummy conversion first because sometimes the first read does actually produce a strange value. And then while the new value is different from the old value, we're going to go down through this loop, which basically is just a debounce loop, um, delaying 12 milliseconds in between each one. Now, the values I'm mapping, I'm using the map function now to a button number. Okay. And then this commented outline here, uh, underneath where it says pot equals analog read it says this line used to find top count well all you do is you take the comment bit out of the line and leave in the serial print line bit and run the software and press any switch and you'll see scrolling up your um, screen the actual pot value which is what you need for that uh, to set that variable up at the top there. And finally we have a number of tries um, to give us a timeout because what you don't want to do is to um, have the whole system frozen while you're waiting for a keyboard to, key to be read. Don't forget it might never be pressed so it could be stuck there forever while it should be doing something else. So I've just put in 20 so it'll go through this loop 20 times if the key's read it'll, it'll uh, return it if it's not it'll return zero if it times out it'll return zero simple as that <coughs> then I've got a routine called LED flash um, that I wrote it's just a simple LED flasher because that's all I'm actually going to do when a key is released on this and a quick word about pressing and releasing because you need to detect when a key is pressed and when a key is released simply because there are some actions you might want to take as soon as a key is pressed like starting a motor running there's other actions that you might only want to happen when a key is released like stopping it from running so it's important when you write a button handler like this one that you can distinguish between those two events. So here we've got it, um, handle buttons. If button is not equal to the old button, so only if it's a change in state. If button is greater than naught, i.e. a button actually has been pressed, then we do whatever we need to do. In this case, I'm just sending to the serial port the fact that that button has been pressed. And then if old button is bigger than naught, i.e. if there was a key pressed before, and now there is one, then you'll send the fact that the button has been released. And in our case, I'm going to flash the LED for the demo just to show which button it was that was released. And then finally, you make the old button equal to the new value. And the software loop at the top, all that that is, is just read the buttons and handle the buttons and then obviously any other non-button sort of loopy stuff that you might want to put in goes in underneath that. So that's how the software actually works and it's pretty simple really. Um, there's nothing that uh, is horrendously complicated about it. Um, should be easy enough for you to do. And if you're not confident with doing this and you want to build a demo unit like I've done and, and uh, play with it yourself first, then by all means do so. And you will find that the actual code is available 
on my website www.arduinotronic.com and it's under the tutorials heading. Okay, so here we have our board, our breadboard which I've made up. I shall plug it into my USB and we'll fire up the Arduino software. And as part of the Arduino software, there's a thing called a serial monitor. Under the tools, open that up. So, what I'll do is I'll put my jumper back because I was just playing with it. There we go, and that says what we expect, which is button one pressed because I've got the jumper across button one. Now, if I take our switch simulator, obviously, if I touch it to button one, it's not going to do anything, but there's button two. You see there, button two pressed, button one released. Release that, button two released, button one pressed because obviously I've got that jumper in and so on all the way up through the line. It's button three, button four, button five, button six, button seven. And finally, button 8, which is straight onto the 5 volt rung. So that shows you that all the buttons work with the jumper in. Now obviously, behavior is a bit different if you've only got one key pressed. It just says button 1 pressed and released, button 2 pressed and released, button 3 pressed and released. Button four, oh, step button four. I can do that. Button six, five, pressed and released. Button six, pressed and released. Button seven, pressed and released. And button eight, pressed and released. So there you go. That is how you hang anything up to 20 buttons off a single Arduino analog input. I hope you find it useful.